So my son has a Duplo fire engine and he really wanted a flashing siren to go on the top of it. So I thought I'd have a go. Uh, what I've done is I've made this 3D printed uh, semi-transparent Duplo block. Now I've done this just using a, um, a file I downloaded from Thingiverse, the URL's up here. Um, and instead of having the, um, the innards in here, I've just used this difference tool to actually take out a big chunk from the middle of it. So now I've got space to, um, to put in some electronics. So the next steps, uh, what to put in. So I have um, got a Esprino Puck.js here. Now these usually come in a, um, in a container like this, but inside the puck there's, um, there's the board and basically you can just take the board out. I have taken it and where there are these IO pins, I've sold an LED here between D1 and D2. I've soldered one here between D30 and D31. And here on 28 and 29, there's a little um, piece of speaker so I can, I can do some sound as well. Now, normally you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't want to connect the LED directly to the IO pins of a, of a device like this. But this is a 3.3 volt device, but it's running off a 3 volt battery. Um, and the LEDs themselves, blue and white LEDs, have quite a high forward voltage. And realistically, you're not, you're not really going to encounter any big problems doing this with, with these lights. So um, that's what we're doing here. Now we can have a go at programming it. So um, we have a, a battery in here that's all ready to go. Um, we're actually already connected with the web IDE. Um, so this is just a website that you can you can go to esprino.com forward slash IDE. Um, now you can type some commands in here. So if I just wanted to um, type to to flash one of the onboard LEDs on, I can do that, that's no problem at all. To do this LED though, I'm gonna have to um, gonna have to set two pins up. So on an LED, the long pin is positive and the short pin is negative. So we you know the short pin here is connected to D2. Now I'm just going to write on the right hand side here um, because this is kind of like a, a code editor and you can you can upload the code on bulk to the device. So uh, let's set that one uh, called reset, which will will make it ground. Uh, and the same on this side where you've got D30. What, 30 as well. So now if I do this, hopefully we should be able to turn the LED on with um, dot toggle. You can always use dot set. Uh, and the same with D31 as well, we can do that. Um, so let's just define these as two variables just so that we can, um, we can use them nicely and cleanly in our code. So LED A and LED B. Uh, and now we'll do a, a flashing. So um, I'll create a, just a variable called n um, because we may, instead of flashing between just one light, we may want to want to do more than one. For instance, there's a blue LED on here as well that we might, might want to flash on. So um, let's, let's create a function called pattern one. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll increment n and um, we can say if n is n and one will mean if it's an odd number. Uh, so we can say the a dot right uh, n and one, and then to make actually we want to the a, and to make the opposite, we'll just use not in here. Um, and now we can just use set interval to call pattern one every so often. Uh, let's do it every 500 milliseconds, so twice a second. We'll see if this works. Okay, that's quite promising. So um, the next thing we might want to do is to, um, to do some sound as well. Uh, so to do that, we've got the speaker attached to D28 and D29. So let's, um, let's do Set D29 to um, to ground, 
and now we'll use D28 with analog write. So analog write does pulse width modulation, so you can do D28. We want it to be on half the time, which will give us a, a sort of a square wave, and then we'll have a frequency. And for now, we'll make the frequency. Uh, We'll have this again dependent on the um, on the value of n. Uh, let's go between 800 and 600 hertz. So we can re-upload this, or we can actually just replace this function as is, like that. Now, if I move this near the microphone. It's not desperately quiet, but um, these generally aren't until you attach them to something that will um, that will resonate. So, okay, now we've got our, our sirens, but the issue is how would my son go about turning this on? Um, so I guess the first thing is we need to find a way to, to make it turn off automatically after a while. Uh, so let's go and um, let's create a function that will turn it on first. So instead of just throwing away the value that's returned by set interval, we'll, um, we'll save it. So we'll create a variable called light interval here. And uh, we might as well just check to see whether it's already there. And if it is, we'll clear it. Uh, and now we're going to have a function called turn off where we're also going to clear it and we'll just set it to undefined. And now we want to make sure that um, all of the lights are off. So LED A should be off, LED B should be off. If we were going to use LED 3, which is the blue one, we'll make sure that one's off as well. And we'll also make sure that the speaker is off as well. Um, and just to tidy it up, we'll, we'll create a variable called speaker, uh, SPK, just so that we can see what's going on. Okay, so now, if I upload this, we can say turn on. That will work. And we can also say turn off, and it should all stop. So we don't really want him to have any access to this device itself. Um, there is a, a button on the back of it, which when it's when it's in this container here, it, it makes it um, makes it clickable. But we're not going to really have access to that except by um, by poking up on the inside of the brick. So instead, we'll just do it by movement. So what we'll do is we'll um, we'll have a look at the um, at the web page for the PuckJS itself. There's a whole bunch of information here, but there is some information on the accelerometer and how to use it. Uh, you can pull it for certain information, or you can do movement detection. Now this is really good because it really doesn't draw much power at all while it's doing the movement detection. So if I just pull this code out, um, and we'll, uh, we'll just save it as a separate bit of code here. So right now, this um, will, when it's called, it will turn just the red LED on, um, and then it will set up this um, this timeout so that once it's been been stationary for a while, the light will go out. So if if we just upload this, we'll see it come on, and then the light go off, and if I move it we'll see if the light will, will turn off after a while. So this is good. Well, basically all we care about then is we'll make the sirens go on for five seconds after there's movement. And instead of changing the LED, we'll change LED.reset to turn off. And we'll change LED.set to turn on. But we don't want to actually call this all the time um, because every time it's moving, this will this will keep getting called. So um, we'll say if there's an idle timeout, then 
we'll, we'll clear it and reset it here. But if there wasn't an idle timeout, then this will be the first time it was called. So that's when we turn it on. And then we'll turn it off here. So if we try this. Okay, so now it's gonna keep flashing for its five seconds. Then it'll turn off. Now if I move it, it'll keep doing its siren thing. And hopefully, it'll turn off after a bit again. So, okay, that's um, that's really nice and easy. So the other thing we might want to do is we might just want to create a new pattern. Um, so we'll, instead of this, we'll create pattern two. And um, just for now, we'll hard code this to pattern two. So before we were doing this n and one to see whether n was um, uh, to see whether whether it was basically an odd or an even number. Um, now we could actually have a much much longer set of of patterns that we go through. So let's um, let's say this is a variable called p, and we'll say n and seven. So this means that the pattern will now, it will count from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then it will come back to 0 again. So we can turn LED1 on if n is 0, or n is 2, and then maybe we'll turn that one on if uh, n is 4, or it's, uh, or it's 6. So hopefully it'll go flash 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 of the one on the other side, and for the um, for the speaker uh, we're going to do it for um, just pretty much the same. Just if it's halfway, if it's less than four, then it's halfway. Otherwise, it's it's going to be above that, and it'll be the other frequency. Um, I've actually I've used n here when I should use p, and if I upload this, hopefully. We'll see it going flash flash. So the only problem is that now it's running very slow. So we're actually going to want to increase the speed of this. Let's see if that's too fast. Okay, well that's good. But it, we probably also want to have the, the blue light in the middle working now. So we'll actually, we'll make this a bigger number. So it's now going all the way up to 15. Uh, now we're going to write to the third LED and we'll do that uh, on the so 0 to, let's make this one 6, 8, 12, 14. We'll see if that works. Okay, so that's more of an interesting siren. And now all we have to do is we have to make it choose randomly which siren it's going to use. So this is pretty easy. For this one, we'll say if math.random is less than 0 0.5, then we use the new pattern. Otherwise, we'll use the old pattern at the old speed. Uh, and potentially you could write many patterns, actually put them in an array and choose randomly from the array. But for now, we're not going to do that. So now we've got this how we want it, all we have to do is save it to Flash. So we'll choose Flash, hit that button, and now it should work. So it'll do its five seconds and then it'll turn off. If I move it now, we don't know which pattern it's going to do. It's going to do the old one, and it'll keep doing the old one while I keep moving it around. But if I stop, There we go, and if I do it now, maybe it'll be different. Nope. Because this is the problem with something that's actually random. There you go. And the next step is just to fit it inside the, um, the brick. So luckily it's a, a really neat fit. So all we have to do is turn this up. We'll poke it in here like this make sure the battery's actually in there properly. Uh, 
Um, and in order to make the siren actually work nicely, we're, um, oh, we're, we're going to super glue that in. There we go. And hopefully if I stop moving it, the light will turn off. And if you move it again, Now the only other thing to add to this is that currently this is programmable um, and it's available on Bluetooth all the time. So in fact, we probably don't want to do that. We probably just want it to turn itself off and to it appear like it's a normal non-programmable microcontroller. So the only thing we have to do there is right at the end of our code maybe, we'll write nrf.sleep and that will turn off the Bluetooth functionality completely and it will save a bunch of power. So if I do this now, the second I send it and the upload's complete, it will actually disconnect itself from the IDE um, and it will work as normal. That's it, thanks for watching.